Hey guys, and welcome to part 6 of this tutorial series and today we are going to pass get requests. In particular, we're going to be looking at the start line. We have everything ready from the last part that we need to start, so let's jump straight away into the HTTP parser. We have this diagram from the previous section and we can see that for a request we have three distinct sections that we need for passing. We have the start line, which in our particular case, because we are talking about a request, we are going to be passing the request line. We have the header section and the message body. So let's start modifying the code. So let's open the test case that we have been working on on the previous video. And through it, let's go and open the HTTP parser. So now let's start modifying the pass HTTP request method that we've worked on on the previous video. And let's define the three calls to the three methods that we are going to create at some point uh, to pass basically the three sections that we talked about. And this would be a good starting point, but we don't want to use the input stream directly. We want to use an input stream reader, which is basically a bridge from a byte stream to character stream. It reads bytes from the stream and basically decodes it into a specific char set. In our case, we'll be using US ASCII. And we also want to return an object that represents a request. So let's start modeling this object now and we'll keep modifying it as we go along. So let's go inside package HTTP and let's uh, create a new class. Let's call it HTTP message. And let's add it to our GitHub repository. Also a very important bit is that this requires some planning, which I obviously did before. And that is why the structure is going to look like the way it looks like. So please don't get the impression that I'm making up the code on the fly and creating the structure as we go. No, this was all planned. Now HTTP message is going to be abstract. And that is because both the HTTP request and the HTTP response are a type of HTTP message. The HTTP message class will have all the things that all types of messages have. So let's now create the HTTP request class and add it to the GitHub. And let's make it extend HTTP message. And now let's modify the pass method to return this type of object. And let's create the HTTP request instance object. and make it return that request object. We also need to pass the request object to the methods that are actually going to be doing the passing. And now let's create the methods themselves. First the pass request line, which is the one that we'll be working on right now. Then the pass header and the pass body. Let me just reorganize this a little bit better. And instead of the input stream, we are going to pass the reader. Let's modify the, the input parameters over here. And the name of the variable as well. So let's look at the request line. We have a method, a request target, and an HTTP version. So let's define those on the HTTP request class, and we'll keep them as strings for the time being. Let's leave them all as private. And let's create a constructor with no arguments. And let's make it package level instead of public, like so. 
and what this means is that only other classes of this package can instantiate objects of this type directly. We might create a builder pattern later if we find it useful for some other purpose, but we don't need it for the time being. And now let's give it a look at RFC 7231 at section 4, where the methods are defined. So a few important things to take notice. A method is a token. And the method token is case sensitive. And this is very important. The next important bit is that all general purpose servers must support the methods get and head. All the other methods are optional. So in our server, we are only going to implement those two, at least for now. And the set of methods allowed by a target resource can be listed in a allow header field in section 741. This is interesting and we might want to implement this. Take a notice that it is optional, can be listed. Now, when a request method is received that is unrecognized or not implemented by the origin server, the origin server should respond with a 501, a not implemented status code. And when a request method is received that is known by the origin server but not allowed, then we return a 405, a method not allowed status code. Okay, so this is a good starting point. Let's define another class, this time an enumeration called HTTP method. Let's define the get and the head. Let's copy this. Let's replace the type string with HTTP method and create the getter and setter methods. Also, let's make the setter not public, but package level. I can't see any reason why it should be public right now. Let's open RFC 7230 and section three it defines how a request line should be passed. Let's look at 311, which is the request line. So now some things that we should pay attention to. Recipients of an invalid request line should respond with either 400, a bad request, or 301, a move permanently. So yeah, we'll go with the 400 bad request. Also a server that receives a method longer than any that it implements should respond with a 501, a not implemented status code. and a server that receives a request target that's longer than any URI it wishes to pass must respond with a 414, a URI too long status code. And now for the last bit, at a minimum, the request lengths should be 8,000 octets. So an oct is eight bits, so a byte, therefore 8,000 bytes. So a lot to think about with regards to how to handle the passing of the request line. Thing that we notice is that while passing the request line multiple error situations can arise so let's create an exception type that represents a passing error let's create the HTTP passing exception class and let's make it extend exception when the HTTP passing exception occurs we might have a specific error code that we want to use so let's create those attributes now the error code is actually a status code and those are well defined on the RFC. Let's create an enumeration that contains not all the status codes, but the ones that we will be using. We can later on add more if we need. So let's start with the client error 400, which is a bad request. So 400, bad request, like so. And let's now create the two fields, which are going to be final, the status code, like this, and the message, which is also final. And let's create a constructor that takes in both the fields. So perfect. 
So let's copy and paste this and create the other two ones that we have for the 400s. So 405 method not allowed. not allowed and the 414 which is URI too long I haven't said this before I think but all the 400 codes are client errors and the 500 codes are server errors. So let's create the server errors now. The 500, which is the internal server error, which is going to be more or less a catch-all for us. Internal server error. And let's create the 501, which is the not implemented for the methods. Five hundred and one, not implemented. Perfect. Let's copy this and replace the string with HTTP status code object. Let's now create the constructor which takes in the HTTP status code and assign it to the to our field which is going to be final and private. And let's implement a getter and pass the message to the super. Perfect. And we'll leave it like this for now. If we want to create more constructors later, we can come back and do it. So to start parsing now, let's give it a look at the diagram again. And there are a couple of chars that are particularly important for comparison and parsing of the request line and all parts of the message, to be honest. And these are the SP, the CR and the LF, which is the space, the carrier to return and the line feed. So let's define these as constants now. And for that, I've got this little table of ASCII codes. And we are looking for the space, the carriage return, and the line feed. These values are in hexadecimal, and we are going to use them like that. So let's define an integer that is static, final, Call it SP and let's give it a value of 20 hexadecimal, which basically corresponds to 32. Let's copy this and let's create the CR and the line feed. So the carriage return, which is 0D, which is 13, and the line feed, which is 0A which means it's a 10. Perfect. And let's create a loop where we look for the carriage return line feed chars. So inside the pass request line, we create a int which is going to be representing the byte that we are reading from the input stream reader. And then we do a loop with a while where we assign the byte the value from the reader using reader.read and we compare it to see if it is uh, bigger or equal to zero and while it is so we keep on iterating if it becomes uh, smaller than zero so minus one it means that the stream finished now we compare the byte with CR and keep in mind that the chars are all uh, integers so we can do just a simple equal like this And we reassign the byte again with the value from the reader to see if the next char is going to be a line feed. So assigning here and comparing again. If byte 
equals line feed, like so. The read operations can throw high-yo exceptions, so let's make this method also throw that, and let's make it just return when we get the line feed char. And we'll leave it like this for the time being. On the next part, which should come out next week, we are going to go through how to pass the request line. I hope you enjoyed. If you want to get notification of the next videos, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like. Thanks so much.